Hi, everyone. I'm Michael, also known as the Zamalama. Llama. Good to be back here at Open at Microsoft. If you missed our last video on the community toolkits from last month, uh, be sure to check out the link below uh, and find out more there. We're going to dive more into some components you can use for Windows development using our Windows Community Toolkit Labs uh, components, which are kind of our bleeding edge. And so I've got uh, Niels here with me today to show us that. So let's, uh, let's stay tuned and uh, check it out. All right, Niels, why don't you uh, show us what we have today? Yeah, let's, uh, let's, I will share my screen. And then let's uh, go over to your repo. So in our labs repo, we have a couple of experiments running at the moment. Um, folks are, you know, open for, or we are open for folks to basically contribute new experiments or new ideas that they have. Um, but what's maybe even more exciting is if we go into our labs um, gallery application, to basically show some of those experiments that we've been uh, building out then together with the community and also with a few partners across Microsoft. Um, so the first tool that I want to uh, highlight is our new uh, marquee text control. Um, this was contributed by, uh, by a community member uh, and it basically allows you to very easily uh, you know, create these um, moving tickers almost that you often see in, in some of the applications. Um, you can change all types of things, like the direction that you wanted to uh, wanted to go, uh, or even the behavior if you want to make it loop uh, or bounce. Um, and it's really nice to see, you know, how they leverage the uh, labs infrastructure to get this control into it. So really excited to get this one uh, into uh, to get 8.0 soon yeah i could i can um, see this being useful for like you know different notification scenarios and everything like that um and the great thing with our sample app too is like we have the link that will take you right to the discussion to find out more about uh this experiment and all those sorts of things too so um so yeah really really cool stuff to see what what's next yeah so we've also uh building out some other controls um so together with our uh, internal design team we've been looking at some of the uh, you know long lasting community asks uh, one of the new controls is the segmented control, uh, which really allows you to very easily um, filter review or um, filter data. Um, you can use an icon, you can use text or whatever you want to host as this content. Um, and we've added some smart uh, things to it as well, that if you want to, let's say, put it in stretch, it you know e equally uh, divides the, uh, the columns, um, but also uh, allows you to, to add multi-selection um, and you can just get that selected event um, and just propagate that through your uh, through your data or your view. Um, we're also thinking about adding some additional styles. Like this is a, a, almost like a modern pivot style that we call it. Uh, and this allows you to have that same control, but then with a, you know, a bit more of a lightweight style that you can use to, again, you know, change data or, uh, or a specific view. It's really cool. I see a lot of different types of apps these days trying to do do these ex types of experiences. So, so having this kind of built in as a control that's just super super easy to use. Um, can you kind of show what it, what the XAML looks like quick there? Sure, I think that's yeah. a capability me, we have, right? Yeah, right. perfect. Yeah, let me open that up. Yeah, so you can basically use the segmented control and then set uh, you know the different segmented items as a as a child. Um, the cool thing about our samples is everything is interactive, so you can just you know see it in the app see the code as well um, and you know copy and paste it into your own app and you're uh, you're good to go awesome what's next yeah so another control uh, that we've been building out of the last couple of months uh, together with some other groups across Microsoft is this new settings control um, I think you've shown this before very uh, briefly <laughs> right 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 but let me take you through it because it's actually quite uh, you know quite a handy control to create settings pages, which is also a thing. Um, so we have two controls. So we have the settings card and settings expander. Uh, the settings card is, as what it says, you know, it's a card and it will host the header, the description you can put in, you can put in an icon and whatever content you have. Um, the cool thing is, is that um, there's a lot of logic behind the scenes that basically makes sure that it always renders correctly in terms of where we put the icon. Uh, so if you don't define an icon, you can see that it like you know nicely renders to the left. Um, and if you go over to the settings expander, um, it's just very similar. So it actually uses a settings card um, uh, as its base as well, but you can expand it and you can put different settings cards um, in in the content. And what's nice there is that we automatically overwrite the style so that it again looks very much like the settings that we see in Windows 11. 
Uh, you don't need to do anything there. Uh, you can just uh, put in a settings card and we'll make sure that it renders correctly um, across all of these uh, different expanders. You can also make some of these controls uh, clickable. Uh, so it then just gives you a click event and you can launch a website or do some other stuff. Um, it's super flexible, but you know, also very easy to use. And I think that's, that's a really nice example of that you can do a lot of customization but still, out of the box, it just renders the way that you would uh, would like to. And yeah. What does really this nice... What does this code look like? Yeah. Sure. Let me uh, pull that up. Um, so again, we have a settings expander. We set the description and the header um, and the header icon, um, and then we can set the content itself. In this case, it's a it's a combo box that we see up here, um, and then in the within the items, you can set different settings cards. And again, there's a header description content, et cetera. And what's really nice about these controls is that we're actually actively working with uh, groups uh, within Microsoft, like the store team and the PowerToys team to adopt these controls as well. So we have a single code base and um, they actually had some feature requests that we put in. Uh, so by all collaborating together, we can make sure that our community has the best possible controls that even our own apps use as well. Yeah, that's, that's really brilliant. the great great thing about open source and, and having components be open source like this. We can really all collaborate, work together, share share these components. Um, and then PowerToys itself is open source. You can even go see how they're using this component and the, the settings expander and settings card in their app to create their settings pages. So if you're like, hey, how did they do that? We can actually go look at the source and, and, and see how that works. So it's really cool. Right. Yeah, we we also actually have an example of uh, what a you know nice settings page could look like. Uh, it has some nice examples of how to do transitions. So if you open up a card, you can see that the other cards smoothly animate below, um, and also on load we do some uh, stuff. And that's actually just two lines of XAML to do this, uh, which are these uh, entrance and these reposition theme transitions. And they uh, you know they make all the difference because it looks way smoother and uh, something really you know it feels very fluent. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's really awesome. Sometimes it's those little subtle details that make the the largest difference for folks that are using an app and and really, you know, they might not think of it consciously, but it really makes things pop and and right. really kind of makes that big difference to uh to an experience that that they'll be like, "Okay, yeah, this was this was it's not not like 3 or 4 stars, but this is what made it 5 stars." They won't be able to tell you what it is, but it's like those types of little details that if you pay attention to can can really kind of make things uh knock things out of the park. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. I think Another we have maybe cool. time for for one more control. What what what's the next thing that you can wow us? I will show you too, but I'll go over it very quickly. So the cool <laughs> thing about us collaborating with the store to build controls for them is that they also contribute controls back to us, which is super nice. So uh, this is the Shimmer control. This is a um, you know a way to basically communicate to a user that something is loading. So you can see that there's a very subtle animation. Um, this is just a control you can use, and uh, you can basically hide it whenever the loading stops. Um, it's a really nice way, you know, to uh, to add that polish to your app, and something that the store heavily uses. Um, and yeah, they contributed this code, so that's really cool. Uh, another control that they um, or a helper actually that they contributed, and this one is really exciting, is the transition helper. And this is a new. Um, it's almost like a library on its own that allows you to. Uh, animate uh, different XAML compositions uh, without actually writing any C sharp code. Uh, so what you can do is you can, uh, if we open up the example, you can see that we get very smooth uh, animations, um, and you can basically in the XAML define uh, what your first state is, and then how you can animate to the next state. So this is all right, it, it basically handles all the transition states between the things for you automatically, right? You just to say, right. like, this is my first bit of content. This is what I want it to look like. And you say which things are connected, and it does the rest, right? Right. And you can see this uh, being used across the store uh, you know, a lot. And that's, I think, uh, something that our community really values about the store, that it has such uh, you know, great animations and great polish. And this will be something uh, you can do in your own app as well. 
uh, with Toolkit uh, 8.0. So that's really, really exciting. So yeah, the, 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 that team really, really cares about the work and the passion they're putting into the store. It's, it's, and we've definitely been seeing it. It's been a really pleasure working with them to, to take some of the, the great stuff that they've been doing and be able to uh, componentize it and, and really not only make it work for uh, other teams within uh, Microsoft, but for everyone by, by being part of our, our open source toolkit. So yeah. Uh, Great. Thank you so much, Niels, for giving this uh, walkthrough of everything. And if you want to learn more, there'll be links below and uh, we'll be seeing uh, more, more things in the future. So stay, stay tuned. All right. Thanks.